Hello, brilliant cloud community, and welcome back to AWS reInvent. We are here in Las Vegas, Nevada. I'm Savannah Peterson, joined by my co-host Dave Vellante. Dave, how you doing? I'm doing well, thanks, yeah. Yeah, I, I, feel like, I feel like you've got a lot of pep in your step my, today for the fourth day. My voice is coming back, actually. I, I was uh, almost lost you, yesterday. Resilient. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> I actually, at, at, a, um, at a Hitachi event one time, almost completely lost my voice. The, the production guys pulled me off. They said, you're done. <laughs> they gave me the hook. You got booted? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you actually got the hook. So wow. I have good memories of Hitachi. I was going to say, uh, interesting that you mentioned Hitachi. Yeah. Our two guests this morning are from Hitachi. Sid and KP, welcome to the show. How are you guys doing? Looking great for day four. Great, thank great. you. Hanging in there. Thank you, Dave and Salama. <laughs> yeah, cool. Yeah. You know, it was actually a Pentaho thing. Oh, right, Pentaho, which kind of yeah. got you guys into that software edge. It was yeah, yeah, yeah. very, right, right when you announced the, uh, the name change to Hitachi Ventara. It's very cool. I had, uh, had Brian Householder on, you remember Brian? Yeah, he was explaining the vision and yeah. Yeah, well, well look at you, little Hitachi. Veteran. Yeah, I've been around a long time. Yeah, yeah. all right, just a <laughs> casual flex to start us off there. Dave, I love it, I love it. Sid, we've talked a lot on the show about delivering outcomes. It's a hot theme. Everyone wants to actually have tangible business outcomes from all of this. What, what are customers, how are customers realizing value from the cloud? What does that mean? See, uh, till 2007, 2008, uh, it was either or kind right. of architecture. Yeah. Either I'm going to execute my use cases on cloud, or I'm going to keep my use cases and outcomes through edge. But in the last four or five years, and specifically we are in reInvent, I would talk about AWS, a lot of the power of uh, hyperscalers has been brought to edge. If you talk about the Snowball family of AWS, if you talk about Monitron Edge devices, if you talk about the entire serverless uh, being brought into Lambda, coupled inside Snowball, now the architecture premise, if I talk about logical, sh shift is and. Now the customers are talking about executing the use cases between Edge and Cloud. So there is a continuum rather than a binary Boolean decision. So if you are talking about optimizing a factory, earlier I'll do the analytics at cloud and I'll do machine on edge. Now it is optimization of a factory outcome at scale across my entire manufacturing where edge, private cloud, AWS, hyperscalers, everything is a continuum and the customer is not worried about where which part of my data ops, network ops, server ops, storage great, ops is yeah. being executed. The customer is enjoying the use cases and the orchestration is abstracted through an industrial player like Hitachi working very collaboratively with AWS. So that is how we are working on industrial use cases right now. You brought up manufacturing. I don't think there's been a hotter conversation around supply chain and manufacturing than there has been the last few years. I can imagine taking that guessing game out for customers is a huge is a huge deal for you guys. Big, big, because uh, if you look at the world today, right from a safety pin to a, a cell phone jacket to a cell phone, the entire supply chain is throttled. The supply chain is throttled because there are various choke points yeah. and each choke point is surrounded by different kind of supply and geopolitical issues. Now 100%. we talk about a wheat crisis happening because of the Ukraine-Russia war, but the wheat crisis actually creates a multiple string of impacts which impact everything. Silicon, now we talk about silicon but we then forget about nickel. Nickel is also controlled in one part of that geopolitical conflict. So everything is getting conflagrated into a very big supply issue. So if your factories are not performing beyond optimum, if they are not performing at real, I, I'm, we are talking about factory, hyperscale of the factory. The factory needs to perform at hyperscale to provide what the world needs today. So we are in a very different kind of a scenario. Some of the economists call it, earlier the recession was because of a demand uh, constraint. The demand used to go down. Today's recession is because the supply is going down. The demand is there, but the supply is going down and the, there is a different kind of recession in the world. The supply is what is getting throttled. And the demand is somewhat unpredictable too. People, you know, retailers Especially have right kind of messed up their, their yeah. inventory and so the, the data is still siloed. And yeah. that's where, you know, you get to, okay, can I have the same experience across clouds, on-prem, out, out to the edge? 
kind of si bust those silos. Yep. You know, I, I don't know if it's, it's certainly not entirely a data problem. There's, like you say, geopolitical and social there's issues. There's so much but, complexity. But there's a data problem too. Yes. Big. So I wonder if you could talk about your sort of view of, point of view on that cross-cloud, hybrid, out to the edge, what I call super cloud. Absolutely. So today if you look at how enterprises are adopting cloud or how they're leveraging cloud, it's not just a hosting platform, right? It is the platform from where they can draw business capabilities. You heard in the reInvent that Amazon is coming up with a supply chain service out right. of the box in the cloud. That's the kind of capabilities that business wants to draw from cloud today. So the kind of multi-cloud or like hybrid cloud, public cloud, private cloud, those are the things which are kind of going to be behind the scenes. At the end of the day, the cloud needs to be able to support businesses by providing that services closer to their consumers. So the challenges are going to be there in terms of like reliability, resilience, cost, security. Those are the ones that you know, many of the enterprises are grappling with in terms of the challenges. And the way to solve that, the way how we approach our customers and work, work with them is to be able to bring resilience into the cloud, into the services which are running in cloud, and by driving automation, making autonomous in everything that you do, how you are monitoring your services, how we are making it available, how we are securing it, how we are making it very cost effective as well. It cannot be manually executed, it has to be automated. So automation is the key uh, in terms of making the services leveraged from all of this cloud. That's your value add. Absolutely. And, and how do I consume that value add? Is it sort of embedded into infrastructure? Is it a service layer on top? Yeah, so everything that we do today in terms of like how these services have to be provided, how the services have to be consumed, there has to be a modern operating model, right? I think this is where Hitachi has come up with what we are calling as Hitachi Application Reliability Center and Services. That is focusing on modern operating, modern modern ways of like you know, how you support these cloud workloads and driving this automation. So whether we provide a hyper-converged infrastructure that is going to be at the edge location, or we're going to be able to take a customer through the journey of modernization or migrating onto cloud, the operating model that is going to be able to establish the foundation on cloud and then to be able to operate with the right levels of reliability, security, cost, is the key and that's the value added service that we provide. And then the way we do that is essentially by looking at three principles. One, to look at the service in totality. Gone are the days you look at infrastructure separately, application separately, data, and security separately, right? No more right? silos. No more silos. You look yeah. at it as a workload and you look at it as a service. And number two is to make sure that the DevOps that you bring and what you do at the table is totally integrated and it's end to end. It's not a product team developing a feature and then ops team trying to keep the lights on. It has to be a common backlog with the error budget that looks at you know, product releases, product functionalities, and even what ops needs to do to evolve the product as well. And then the third is to make sure that reliability and resiliency is inbuilt. Cloud offers native durability, native availability, but if your service doesn't take advantage of that, it's kind of going to still be not available. So how do you kind of ingrain and invert all of these things as a value add that we provide? There's a lot of noise. We've got hybrid cloud, we've got multi-cloud, we've got a lot going on, it adds to the complexity. How, how do you help customers solve that complexity as they begin their transformation journey? I mean, I'm sure you're working with the biggest companies making really massive change. How do you guide them through that process? So it is to look at the outcome working backwards, like what AWS does, right? Like, you know, how do you look at the business outcome? What is the value that you're looking mm -hmm. to drive? Again, it's not to be pinned through one particular cloud. You know, there is a lot of technology choices that you can make and a lot of deployment models that you can choose from. But at the end of the day, having a common operating model, which is kind of like modern, agile, and it is kind of like keeping the outcomes in the mind, that is what we do with our customers, to be able to create that operating model which completes the transformation by the way, and cloud is just one part of the Lego blocks which provides that overall scheme and then the view for driving that overall transformation. So let's paint a picture, let's say you've got this resilient foundation, you've kind of helped the customers build that out, how do they turn that into to value for their customers? Do you have any examples that you can share? That'd be great. Yeah, I can start with what we're doing for one of the uh, you know, world's largest uh, facility, infrastructure, power, cooling, security monitoring company that has their products deployed in 2,000 locations across the globe. For them, an always on business means you're monitoring the temperature, you're monitoring the safety of people who are within the facility, right? A temperature shift of one to two degree can affect even their sustainability goals of not our customer, but also their end consumers. So how do you monitor these kind of like critical parameters? How do you have a platform? How Great do you example. have cloud resources yeah. that are going to be always on, that are going to be reliable, that are going to be cost effective as well, mm -hmm. is what we're doing for one of our customers. Sid can talk about another example Great. as well. Yeah, go for so it. There are examples, uh, rail. Uh, we 
are working with a group in England. It's called West Coast Partnership. And uh, they had an edge device, which was increasing in size. Now this edge device was becoming big because the parameters which go into the edge device were increasing because of regulation and because the rail is part of uh, national security infrastructure. We have worked with West Coast Partnership and Hitachi Rail, which is a group company, to create a miniaturization of this edge device because if the size of the edge device is increasing on the train, then the weight of the train increases and the speed profile, velocity profile, everything goes down. So we have miniaturized the edge device. Secondly, all the data profiles, signal control, traction control, traction motors, direction control, timetable compliance, everything has been kept uniform. And we have done analytics on cloud. So what is the behavior of the driver? What is the big braking parameter of the driver? If the timetable is being missed, is there an erratic behavior being demonstrated by the driver to just meet the timetable? And the timetable is a pretty important criteria in rail because if you miss one, then... So what we have done is we have created an edge to cloud environment where the entire rail analytics is happening. Similarly, in another group company, Hitachi Energy, uh, they had a problem, that, arguably one of the largest uh, transformer manufacturer in the world. Yeah. Now, transformer is a pretty common name now because you're seeing what is happening in Ukraine. Russia went after the transformers and yeah. substations before the start of the winter so that the district heating can be uh, meddled with. Now, the transformer, uh, it had a lead time of 17 weeks before COVID. So if you put me an order of a three-phase transformer, I can deliver it to you in 17 weeks. After and during COVID, the entire lead time increased to 57 to 58 weeks. In cases of a complex transformer, it even went up to something like two years. Oh. Now, they wanted to increase the productivity of their existing plant because there is only that much sheet metal, that much copper for solenoid, that much microprocessor and silicon. So they wanted to increase the output of their factory from 95 to 105. 10 more transformers every day, which is 500 and which is 3650 every, 3650 every uh, uh, year. year. Yeah. Now to do that, we went to a very complex machine. It's called a Georg machine. And we increased the productivity of that Georg machine by just analyzing all the throttles and all the wastages which are happening there. There are multiple case studies because see, Hitachi is an industrial giant yeah. with 105 years of body of work. KP and I just represent a tip of the digital tip of the arrow. But what we are trying to do through HARC, through industry cloud, through partnership with AWS, is basically containerizing and miniaturizing our entire body of work into a democratized environment, an industrial app store, if I may say, where people can come and take their industrial outcomes at ease without worrying about their computational and network orchestration between edge and cloud. That's what we are trying to do. I love that analogy of an industrial app cloud. Makes it, makes it feel easier in decreasing the complexity of all the yeah. different things that everyone's factoring into making their products, whatever, sure. they're, whatever they're making. So we have a new challenge here on theCUBE at AWS reInvent where we are looking for your 30 second hot take, your Instagram reel, sound bite. What's the most important story or theme either for you as a team or coming out of the show? You can ponder it for a second. It might be different. See, for me, it is industrial security. Uh, industrial OT security should be the theme of the Western world. Western world is on the crosshairs of multiple bad actors and the industrial security is in the chemical plants, is in the industrial plants, is in the power grids, is in our postal networks and our rail networks. They need to be secured, otherwise we are geopolitically very weak. Gone are the days when anyone is going to pick up a battle with America or Western world on a field. The battle is going to be pretty clandestine on a cyber world and that is why industrial security is very important. Critical infrastructure. Absolutely. In well said, Sid. KP, what's your hot take? My take is going to be a modern operating model which is going to complete the transformation and to be able to tap into business services from cloud. So a modern operating model through Hark, that is going to be my take. Fantastic, well can't, see what, can't wait to see what comes out of Hitachi next. Absolutely. Sid, KP, thank, thank you. you so much thank for being you. here. Absolutely. This is, I could talk to you all about supply chain all day long. 
and thank all of you for tuning in to our continuous live coverage here from AWS reInvent in fantastic Sin City. I'm Savannah, excuse me, with Dave Vellante, I'm Savannah Peterson. You're watching theCUBE, the leader in high-tech coverage.